All right, sweet. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Alex. Uh, I work for a company called Candela Technologies. We're local to Bellingham. I do software, whatever, for network testing, wireless, all sorts of things. We do a lot. Um, there's a QR code up here, as well as a link to a GitHub repository. There's a guide there if you want to follow along. These slides are up there as well. Um, I'll probably update them in a couple of days with any other additional things that I think are interesting, but there's quite a bit there. Um, we'll be kind of walking through that here as a demo after some slides. Um, so a little bit about myself. Like I said, I work for a local company called Candela Technologies. I got my computer science degree at Western just up the street, so definitely Bellingham local. My first Linux Fest was, I think, 2019. Um, I think that, was that the last in-person one? Yeah. It was fun. I didn't know what I was doing. They're coming back. <laughs> Still don't. They're coming back. Yes, exactly. We're here. But um, anyway, uh, that's why I'm qualified to maybe talk about this a little bit. So please interrupt me if you have questions. Raise your hand. I'm happy to answer them. So what is wireless packet capture? It seems like most of y'all are familiar with packet capture generally, but in case you're running into network issues or something like that, maybe you want to just take a peek at what's kind of going over the air um, anywhere, um, maybe that's why you'd want to do wireless packet capture. Full disclaimer though, this talk is for educational purposes. <laughs> Use it for good, not evil, but if you do that, then it's your responsibility. So we're gonna do a little TCP IP model review here, just so that way we know what we're talking about. So um, this is the TCP IP model, or as far as I'm concerned it is. Application, transport, network, link, physical layer. Top most level, HTTP, SSH, blah, 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 TCP, DP, IPv4, IPv6. And now we get into the more interesting things, at least for this talk, which are Wi-Fi, maybe Ethernet, 802.15.4, other things like that. Now, I'll show you guys in a little bit kind of some of the issues that could come up maybe when you're trying to do wireless packet capture. And, and we're going to do it the hard way because that's it, it's more fun that way. There's more things you can kind of configure. But if you just try to sniff on your uh, network interface that's wireless on Linux, like just default, you're only going to get this and above. Save a little bit here, right? So there's some like asterisks, right? So um, as some definitions, my laptop is connected to an access point, which I think is City of Bellingham public Wi-Fi, right? We call that a station or a client, and that's connected to an access point, right? A router, Wi-Fi, depends on what you call it, but we call it an AP. Um, if you just sniff like right here up, you're only gonna get like basically you talking to the access point because that's all you're sort of listening to. You need to configure the radio in such a way that it just hands everything it hears off to user space and then you can just kind of do your magic, basically. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, some basic concepts here. I just talked about an access point, um, talked about clients or stations. Um, I also want to mention uh, these two other things, an extended service set and a basic service set. Um, they're important because when you see Wi-Fi, typically, if you're not like working in the space very often, you just think of there's this Wi-Fi, I connect to it, I give it a password, and I just go log in, right? you typically see the SSID, and that's what you connect to, right? So you're in like, say, Western, or you're in the library, right? We have access points. I don't know if I've seen any of you there. I don't know, I think there's only one in this room. But if there was like two, or maybe there's another one in another room, as you walk through the building, right? Currently, I'm probably connected to this one, but as I walk to another room, this signal is gonna get really weak. So I want to roam to the next access point. And you can do that because they're both using the same SSID. They're both in the same extended service set, and you go from one BSS to the next, right? And the unique identifier for these is the MAC address of the access points, both here broadcasting the campus Wi-Fi SSID. That's what this is broadcasting right now. Um, later in the talk, I'll do a little bit of a packet capture. So, you know, at your own risk, uh, at, at your own discretion, trusting your fellow Linux people here, you can connect to this access point. The password is just all lowercase Linux Fest. Um, the SSID is campus Wi-Fi here. I'll maybe make the, the packet capture a little more interesting because I don't know what else is on this network currently. Um, <laughs> we'll see. There's no client isolation either, so you are at your own risk. So you can talk to other people if you want. <laughs> Disclaimer. Uh, so again, uh, some more basic terminology here. Your client or your station will connect to an access point on a channel. There's a lot of different channels. Um, they're all slices of the radio frequency spectrum, and Wi-Fi only uses part of that, and that currently is only 2.45 gig 6 gigahertz bands. As the, the person in the front was noting, this one is a Wi-Fi 6E AP, and the E is important there, because the E indicates that it supports this 6 gigahertz band. 
not every uh, regulatory domain, say the US or Europe um, or China or Korea, support that necessarily. Um, you know, the, the bigger players do, but it's still kind of rolling out elsewhere. Um, more so they support 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. There's all sorts of asterisks in this though, like 5 gigahertz shares uh, channels with uh, radar. So if, if your access point is using that and detects radar, it's got to hop off and then your client's got to follow with. So as like an access point vendor, you want to make sure it does that. As a station, you want to make sure your station roams very like seamlessly. Because if you're on a phone call and it drops packets for three seconds, well, you just missed three seconds of that call. So those things are some things that, that like our software at the company I work for can help people test. Um, so it's like an overview here um, as Wi-Fi channels. This is from uh, Keith Parsons, who is involved in, and I think runs WN Professionals. Don't quote me on that. They do all sorts of really interesting talks on Wi-Fi. They have a conference, a couple of them. Um, I'm hoping to go through the next one here. But this is just the 2.4 gigahertz unlicensed spectrum. As you can see here, Wi-Fi is up at the top. We've got Zigbee or 802.15.4, and then Bluetooth as well down here. So it's pretty loud. It also shares the band with other things. Um, in, in addition to these, maybe a microwave or stuff like that. Um, but the radios, I think nowadays are pretty. You got that wrong. No. Microwaves, microwave and industrial use was the original purpose of it. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's why it's unlicensed, yes. right? See, I, my back. Communications function came along much later. Okay. <laughs> You sure you can't communicate by pressing the buttons on the microwave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It's called Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't claim to be an expert in RF. Uh, again, my background is computer science. All this stuff I've learned is on the job, and most of my experience is kind of up the stack. Once it gets to the actual radios, beyond the channels, once we get to like modulation and like 1024 QAM or whatever else, that's where I start to ask my coworkers, hey, can you talk to this customer instead? Do <laughs> you have a comment? The other, the other folks that you share the band with are ham radio buffers. Oh, okay, interesting. So There's we're a we're fighting. One more time. We're fighting. Sorry, we're fighting to keep the spectrum. <laughs> Don't worry, I want to stay off two four, so you guys can have it. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm gonna highlight here again. This is the two four Wi-Fi uh, spectrum here. And typically, most people use channels 1, 6, and 11, I believe. Uh, <laughs> asterisk, no, asterisk. Good job. There's some guard bands here, right? You kind of like not No, there's 11 on. channels in there. Oh, there are. And it just hops up. You can the use. The bad hop all over the place. Yeah, yeah. You can use all of them, but like if you want to be a nice neighbor, you typically use these ones. That way, you know, if someone else in. Because I live in an apartment, and there's all sorts of SSIDs being broadcast, all sorts of access points. If I'm on channel one, that means I'm not stomping on the, uh, or contending with another AP that's on channel six. So be a nice neighbor, please. Um, these are all 20 megahertz channels, which is the smallest channel width you can have in Wi-Fi. Um, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz have both been around since the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. Um, but increased channel widths have been introduced as different specs have been introduced. Um, this is the five gigahertz. There's all sorts of stuff in this diagram. I'm not gonna cover it all. But you can barely make it out here, but there's 20, 40, 80, and 160 megahertz channel widths. Um, 20, 40, 60, or 20, 40, 80, 160, right? And, and the larger channel width you have, the faster your Wi-Fi is. Um, asterisks there. And down at the bottom, you see all sorts of stuff of the FCC, Canada, Australia, EU. This is all these requirements of, okay, it's unlicensed, right? And you can use that for whatever you want if you were stamped good to go in this. I don't claim to know all of this. I don't want to know all this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something to consider if you are an access point vendor like Cisco or, or a station vendor like, like Lenovo or, no not Lenovo, Broadcom or, or something like that. Um, and then there's DFS for radar, but this is all stuff you can look up on your own. <laughs> okay, so time for some packet capture. Um, this is where the demo is gonna be fun. So some tools that you can use for the job. Um, we're gonna use Wireshark for sure. Um, you can use IW, Aircrack NG, uh, as well as if you really wanted to, kernel debug FS files. You kind of have to for sniffing six gigahertz, but um, some of that stuff's in the guide. I'll let you refer to that later. Um, these two are probably the easiest to use, Wireshark and Aircrack NG. Um, I believe Aircrack NG comes installed by default on Kali Linux. I'm not sure. Don't boot Kali Linux, but it's there. You can install it. I have it on Ubuntu. 
Um, and I'll show you kind of how we can use that, but we're going to use these two instead because it's harder and more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, let's go into a little bit of a demo. Um, how visible is this? I'm pretty, uh, not vision impaired, but my vision is not great. So <laughs> if you need me to zoom in, I have sympathy, just let me know. So Aircrack NG, I'm going to start with that because that's the easy one. I want to show you what it can give you and then hop into um, some things you can do with IW. And then we'll get to sniffing with Wireshark. So Aircrack NG, you need to run it with sudo because um, most, <laughs> most of the stuff you need root access for. Just heads up, all in the guide. Um, so if you do sudo Aircrack NG, and then we'll do the help because that's good. Um, it's a little too verbose. OK, well, you can do check That was what I want to show here. Check. OK, maybe maybe we're going to move on. We're not going to do that one. Uh, <laughs> but basically, what I wanted to show here was that with Aircrack NG, you can use it to uh, check any interfering programs that might use it. Network Manager is probably going to be the main one. Um, sometimes it mentions WPA Supplicant, which is run by Network Manager. Uh, but you can also use it to check what radios are on your system. I myself happen to know what radios on the system because I prepared for my talk, I think. <laughs> no, but um, we're going to go and check that out. So if I go to the directory where this is at, this is in the Git repo. Um, so I got this guide here that you can follow. I'm going to use this tool, and then I've got uh, some slides that I'm currently presenting right now. So. I, knowing my radio on my system, know its capabilities, but this list interfaces tool will also help you out. Um, it has a fine name, right? And then you create a station or access point or a monitor on top of that. Um, print out the PCI bus in case you need that. And then this is printing out if any network interfaces which are created on this Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi represents the radio, and then these network interfaces represent maybe you're running, right now I'm connected to the Wi-Fi, right? So this is a station. You can also create an access point on your radio. Like I could make my laptop into an access point if I wanted to. Um, and then we're going to use a monitor <laughs> as well, uh, which is another type that you can use. So with that said, um, I'm going to go and I'm going to delete the uh, interface that's on there currently because I don't want it interfering with anything. What's up? You might have been looking for Airmon NG check build. That, let me try it. <laughs> Like that? There we go. Nice. OK, this is what, as uh, you mentioned over there, this is the potentially interfering programs. This next step we're going to run is going to basically take this out of the equation. Network manager knows about this WLAN 0 that I printed out up there, and it'll try to manage that. So if you're trying to use that and like maybe change what channel it's on or whatever else, network manager is going to kind of come back in and like tell you, no, you can't do that, and then just move it back to the channel it was on under your feet. Because it's currently connected to whatever channel this SSID is. It's broadcast. It, it, no, it's helpful. We love Network Manager. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's not helpful in this case. So I'm going to delete that uh, station. OK. And I, can, I know I'm doing this because I can just print out the uh, current interfaces right here, right? So there used to be a WLAN 0 here. I deleted that. It's no longer there. Now we're going to create a monitor um, like that. If you can see that. Um, <laughs> so here's the IW command to do that. Uh, we're basically using this radio and saying we want to add a new interface to it and we want to create it in monitor mode, right? And I named it Moni Zero for convenience. So we can go ahead and do that. Okay. And then if I want to check that it's there, I can run that uh, the link command. The dash br is convenient, otherwise it just kind of explodes in the terminal. And we see here there's a monitor. It's currently down, um, as you can see on both sides here. That'll change, though, when we try to up it. And then I'll run that again. OK. Now we have a monitor. And now you're like, what the hell? It's in a known state. What does that mean? Well, no, no, no. Ignore this. Look <laughs> over here. We see it's up. And its device driver, more or less, is up as well. So now we can use it. But this AP here, I've configured to channel 36, which is 5180 megahertz. But this monitor is not set to that, right? It's just going to listen to its default, which if I show you with this, is the channel 1 from the 2.4 gigahertz band that we saw earlier. Now, there's all sorts of stuff here, but not that. I have not configured that for this, so we're just not going to see anything. So we need to set it to the right uh, frequency. We can do that. 
with this command. We're saying use the network interface we created earlier, Monty Zero, set it to the channel, which you need to know the frequency for this, which in this case is 5180. Um, and then we can say the channel width as well. In this case, I know that my radio is only capable of up to 80 megahertz channels. Sometimes they're 160. This AP, I think, is currently broadcasting anything from 20, 40, 80, and 160. But again, I'm, I'm only capable of 80, so I'm only going to do that. Now we can verify it by again checking this. And now we see we're on channel 36, 5180 megahertz, and our channel width is also 80 megahertz. Sweet. OK, now let's do some packet capture. So if there's anyone that's been kind enough to connect, um, <laughs> you're connected. If you would like to connect, you're more than welcome to, but at your own discretion. Um, we're going to run Wireshark. So there's permission stuff that you can set if you don't want to run it with sudo. I have it on my machine because I just haven't. But that's our interface that we're going to sniff on. And here's the thing is, like I said earlier, if we had not done any of these steps and we are on this step and we want to sniff on WLAN 0, we're only going to see traffic from layer 3 up, and we're only going to see it from my client to the AP. With this, when we configure the monitor, we'll see everything that's on the air that our radio is, is set to, right? So we're set to channel 36. We're going to see everything that's on channel 36 or everything that the radio is willing to hand off to us and detect properly. So I'm going to do this now. Press enter. We see there's some stuff happening. And there's all sorts of stuff. And if I left this running, which I have before at work overnight, I woke up, came back to work, and I have like zero disk space left. What ID are we connecting to? One more time? What ID are we connecting to? Uh, I believe it's campus-wi-fi. It should probably yeah. show up. I, so one of them, oh, probably because it's broadcasting on 2.4 and 5. Um, but I, I also hope that they're Linuxfest, all lowercase. I should have mentioned that. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so right now, it's just spitting out a bunch of stuff, right? There's, there's some stuff up here. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try to show only, and I apologize if this is too small, um, I'm going to only show campus Wi-Fi. Buddhist Babe is someone else in my apartment complex that I was trying to do this early for. Don't worry, that's not my Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here's all sorts of things happening right here, but only two types that we can primarily see. There's beacon frames and probe responses, and maybe some probe requests in here as well. Beacon frames are the access point broadcast in the world, hey, I exist, come join me. Probe responses are the access point responding to probe requests from a device asking, hey, where's Buddhist Babe? Where's that, where's that access point at? Are you there? Um, there's some interesting talks. I think I saw one from DEF CON where your device will do this stuff, right? It just kind of probe requests out all sorts of the time, right? I have, um, let me go back to the, the terminal here. If I do this, so I have these network manager connections, none of which are up right now, but this WLAN can can, that's my <laughs> as this idea at home. Uh, it may, like my device here, when it's trying to look for, or for networks, it may send out probe requests with WLAN can can, just like, hey, where are you? Where are you? So there's an interesting DEF CON talk. Hey, where's NSA Wi-Fi? Oh, interesting. I want to follow this person around. <laughs> they followed this person all the way around Vegas at DEF CON, and were able to like, give like, a, a map of where these people had been, just from their device <laughs> probe requesting out. So something to consider here. Um, going back to Wireshark, we see all this stuff, okay, that's great, but we're only seeing beacon frames and probe responses. What we want to do is we want to see something other than that. Um, so I'm going to go in here, and I think this is me uh, being straightforward and saying that I, myself, with Wireshark, am not the most advanced, so please feel free to suggest things here. Um, I'm going to go and filter on some stuff. So management frames are, are layer two connection, uh, uh, things transmitted from a client to an AP or vice versa. I'm going to try to filter out some of these. I could do that using this wlanfc.type and just like say I don't want any of that. But I'm going to start to filter for things at the IP level because I think if there's anyone connected, it should start showing some stuff like that. Um, uh, all right, here's some interesting data. OK. so. It's in the guide, but if you had just configured this following the steps that I had demoed here, you wouldn't see any of this, right? Because this uh, access point is using what's called WPA2 personal authentication, 
which means it's encrypted traffic between your client and station, but me being the benevolent person here giving a guide or a demo, uh, I know the, the, the password for this, and Wireshark is capable of decrypting those, so long as you are able to see the client connect to the AP. Basically, when a client connects to an AP, there's what's called a four-way handshake. It's like, hey, I exist. Okay, give me the authentication stuff. All right, here it is. All right, you're good to go. And then you're connected. When Wireshark sees that, it sees the, the key handoffs and such, and then given the, the password, is able to start to use those to decrypt the packets being sent. And I could probably go on for a while talking about all sorts of things, but um, I mean, this is what you could get you know, at the end of the guide. And, and what you want to look for here depends on your use case. You know, you could look for airtime utilization. You could look for, I don't know, maybe just making sure that your, your packets are leaving your, uh, your laptop, maybe. But it really depends on what you're looking for. So up to this point, that's kind of the, the deal. One one you could try is HTTP and TCP.payload. Okay. That gives you all of your HTTP traffic that's unencrypted. Is it just? Can I, can I do either and or and and? I Space and just the word. Okay. My filter uh, ability is very simplistic. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, you've got stuff that you can see. I mean, I'm getting this traffic from someone's phone or laptop connecting this access point from this, right? I, I don't have to be connected to this network to do this, right? And that's the reason why I gave this disclaimer is you could do this anywhere, right? If you know the proper things to do. But you really probably shouldn't unless you have <laughs> approval to. Otherwise, you might be breaking federal wiretap laws. So be careful. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's all sorts of other interesting bits we could get into here. Um, I don't want to waste anyone's time with things. And I think we got the robo ruckus coming up. Yeah, we're coming up. So, so not down here yet. So feel free to. to okay. So you don't have.